Tyron Woodley in the house. What's Tyron up, my is one of the best MMA fighters, and not just fighters, but boxers. This guy has made it now to the Middle East. Tyron, what are you doing over there? Well, Wild West Side, what I'm doing over there is basically I took a year to vet out the region, uh, see where I fit in. It's a lot of areas in business where I feel like the niche is something that I just so happen to have all these different wheels that are already moving. So now I'm autobotting those wheels together, and I'm rolling and flowing. 2024, right, you had... I haven't fought in for two years now, mm -hmm. and you put yourself in position to be a promotion company in the Middle East. What kind of fights do you expect for this new year? You know, in 2022, I fought, right? And I was in a situation where basically in 2023, I was supposed, no, 2021, I fought at the end of it. 2022, I took a year to be normal, regular. Um, I took a, a break. I hadn't had a break in 30 years from 10 to 40 straight, 30 years straight with no break. I was an athlete. Um, 2023, I was supposed to fight January 14th against KSI. I was supposed to fight June against Floyd Mayweather, and those fights didn't come through. So what I found out is that don't put your destiny and don't put your livelihood in somebody else's hands. So I created my own promotion company so I can promote fights myself, I can pay myself, and I can put myself in position to be victorious. So that's where the Realist International Promotion came in. Uh, we launched a business in Dubai, um, 2023. Um, and in 2024, we're going to go crazy. Now, I saw recently Mayweather was in one of the airports out there. Is he doing any kind of fights in Dubai? I thought I saw something, right, at one of the, the tallest buildings. Yeah, definitely. He did a fight in Dubai last year um, or the year before, November. Uh, he fought um, Deji, which is KSI's brother. He fought him there. I think he's he's there quite often. Um, obviously, that region is really boosted on influencers. They're really boosted on people that are um, bringing in culture, music, and you constantly see some type of wave going on, especially in Dubai. That's right, the region that's doing the most with um, all the entertainment. So obviously Floyd Mayweather and what he brings to the table is going to be a big draw for that region. So I, I definitely think we're going to see him fight again in um, Dubai or, or probably somewhere close. Now Mayweather, I mean, he's old now, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not talking shit, but, you know, a boxer that's had a, a successful career, why doesn't he just retire? I mean, Michael Jordan retired and said he came back one year later when, and, and tried to play and he said, you know, I'm done. But Mayweather keeps on doing it. Is he just greedy and just wants the money? Is he trying to stay relevant? Is he trying to stay you young? Know, what? For me, I never retire a fighter because I don't want nobody telling me when to walk away. So I feel like the fighter fights for their own why. They have their own reason why they fight. I think Floyd Mayweather never stopped training. His work ethic is his most remarkable attribute. A lot of people don't speak about it, but he never stopped running. He never stopped training. He never stopped hitting the bag. He never stopped sparring. So even when he was retired, he was training just as if he was fighting. So I feel like he feels as long as his body's being used, if you don't use it, you lose it. So he's training nonstop. And why would he not continue to grab the low-hanging fruit if he feel like he can go out there and have exhibition fights, he can fight well, make a lot of money. There's probably other business things he can make more money in, but as far as like making money off of something that probably comes more natural to him after all these years, boxing is it. So if he hasn't found, you know, his match and guys are still not um, up to his level of skill, why would he stop? How much money do these networks make off boxing? I mean, you got HBO, Showtime. They out now. They both are out. What do you mean they're out? I mean, you should do something. Showtime just just announced this year they're no longer going to be covering boxing, right? Wow. Because HBO no longer covers boxing. So now you open up for other networks. We, we won't mention those other networks just because we are trying to basically do our own shit. But now it's a big opportunity and it's a big window for us to basically jump into the game and basically put it on television. Is it because the insurance? Like what happens if, say, somebody you break your neck? Right? Who covers yeah. that? Is that a liability for I mean, Showtime? It's, it's an on-site, um, it's an on-site insurance that basically people are covered as you are going to the event, at the event, and after the event. But in real life, I don't think that's the reason why Showtime and HBO got out the game. I feel like they thought that the influencer or the the era of the people that didn't start in boxing coming over to boxing, they thought it was going to expire, and they feel like to compete with that is tough because think about it. Pay-per-view buys are very close to subscriptions. If you have somebody that's showing you that they, they can make people subscribe, like, follow, and share, right, 
they're going to be put behind a machine of marketing and the motherfuckers are going to be pushed out there to sell pay-per-views. And it's not proven wrong yet. So I feel like Showtime and um, HBO kind of saw that wave and maybe they thought they couldn't compete with it. 